Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox fan, and you're watching on Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. And today we will be doing the audio broadcast and live chat of Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott, 12 rounds heavyweights. The winner here most likely will, in the near future, get a title shot or another big fight against another. Uh, forgot to turn the sound down on the other thing. Um, so. Once again, Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott, 12 rounds heavyweights. And the winner will most likely get a title shot in the near future. I like Luis Ortiz to get an early round knockout, to be honest with you. A couple of quick shout outs um, to channels that I like. And there's links below. Phil the Issues Guy, he does wonderful uh, TV reviews such as Game of Thrones and Walking Dead. And movie reviews. Also, Dirty Issues Gaming with Joe Dirty Locks and Taka. They do video games and uh, some fun shows. Batman Boxing. This has some great boxing video clips. Bayloric Boxing with Ingram Jones. Wonderful interviews. He does a great job. Mosley Boxing. Wonderful boxing collages uh, of videos. And, and they're just marvelous. Johnny the Irish Wildling also does uh, TV and movie reviews such as Game of Thrones and Westworld and The Walking Dead. and Just a fun guy. And Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint, also does reviews uh, for shows and movie reviews that are coming up. Uh, he reviews the um, trailers and movies he's, he has seen. So... All those links are provided below. Check them out. Highly recommend them. Very entertaining people. I've also provided a way to download Mobdro. There's a YouTube video that will show you how to download that. And I've also provided links that um, I believe are still up. And you can watch the fight there if necessary. Just be careful with links as there's usually malware on them. So. I am watching this fight on HBO on the TV, and uh, we're getting ready to watch Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott, 12 rounds, heavyweights. Hope everyone's doing well out there. This is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching on Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. I believe this will be the only fight that we'll be doing um, on this HBO card, and uh, they're just showing some highlights right now of both fighters. I honestly think that Luis Ortiz should... Um, blow Malik Scott away, but I'm looking forward. Hopefully I'm proven wrong and it's going to be a good fight. Um, Malik Scott in his last six fights has been stopped twice, once by Delonte Wilder and once by Derek Chisora. Uh, his last fight was a unanimous decision over Tony Thompson. Uh, Luis Ortiz has won five of his last six fights, and there was a no contest in there also. His last fight was a knockout of Tony Thompson. So both fighters are coming off wins over Tony Thompson. He's also coming off, uh, Luis Ortiz also uh, TKO'd uh, Bryant Jennings, which was a good win for him. So I think that Luis Ortiz needs to be impressive here. This fight is coming from Monte Carlo. Um. So we're just waiting for the bout to come on. Quickly, Luis Ortiz's record, excuse me, is 25 wins, no losses, 22 KOs, no draws, one no contest. He has an 81% KO percentage. Malik Scott is 38 wins, two losses, one draw with 13 KOs. He has been KO'd twice in his two losses. And he only has a knockout percentage of 32%. So Malik Scott's chin is suspect. Um, Delonte Wilder is a big hitter. Uh, but Derek Chisor is a good puncher, not a great puncher. So we shall see in this 12-round heavyweight bout coming live from Monte Carlo. Hope everyone's doing well out there. This is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. And we're just waiting. For the fighters to get in the ring and actually have some pugilism going on. 
What are your thoughts on the upcoming Kovalev Ward fight? Share your thoughts in the chat. Jump in. Hope everyone's doing well out there. As we're waiting for the fight to start here in Monte Carlo, Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott, 12 rounds heavyweights. This will be my live audio call. There is no video of the fight. I have provided links if you'd like to watch. Use them at your own risk. I've also provided a way on YouTube to see how you can download Mobdro. I highly recommend downloading Mobdro as it's a very good link. The HBO link and the Box Nation link were up earlier this morning. I don't know if they're still up on there, but they usually are. So right now, they're just giving a little information on Luis Ortiz and Malik Scott that I've already provided. And we are just waiting for the fight to start. Who do you like in this fight between Ortiz and Scott? I do believe that Luis Ortiz will win within five rounds, knockout. I think Scott will have to really box him and try to set traps and counter him. But I think Ortiz will be able to walk him down and land his big hard shots. And I do believe that the winner of this fight is in line for bigger paydays. So they're just giving some... Information about Luis Ortiz as I'm waiting for the fight to begin. It's Al Red Sox fan. You're watching an Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. Remember, check out Fill the Issues Guy. Link provided below. Dirty Issues Game. Thing. Batman Boxing. Baylor TV with Ingram Jones. Mosley Boxing. Johnny the Irish Wildling. Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint. All links are provided below. Check out their channels when you get a chance. They do a wonderful job with what they do. And right now they're just showing highlights of Ortiz's knockout of, excuse me, Brian Jennings, which really was a good win for him because Jennings was coming off a decision loss uh, to Klitschko. And Ortiz just totally dominated him. Jennings just looked very flat, and they're just showing uh, Ortiz pummeling Jennings on the ropes right now. So that was an excellent win for Luis Ortiz. Again, this is Al Red Sox fan you're watching on Al Red Sox fan YouTube station, the live audio call of Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott. 12 rounds, heavyweights. Hope everyone's doing well out there. We are just waiting. They're doing a, some pre-fight um, for the bout. As they just showed, Luis Ortiz knocking down Brian Jennings and now stopping him. And that was a uh, truly good effort by Luis Ortiz there. Good win. To me, that's his best win of his young career. The Tony Thompson win was good also, but I think the Brian Jennings win was better. So they're just showing Luis Ortiz right now. He's in his dressing room, staying loose, got a little water, doing a little dipping, a little diving, a little bobbing, a little weaving. He'll be wearing white trunks with blue and red trim, and on the red trim on the side, it says King Kong. That is his nickname. Very big puncher. And again, we're awaiting the fighter's entrance into the arena. And they're just showing Ortiz working the pads a little bit with one of his corner men, getting loose, staying loose. He looks very calm and relaxed in his dressing room. So, again, right now, Luis Ortiz are showing him in his dressing room, very calm and relaxed, just working the pads with one of his corner men. I expect Ortiz to be victorious in this fight via stoppage or knockout within five rounds. I think Malik Scott will have to fight the perfect fight to win a decision here. Um, I mean, they're heavyweights. You never know. You hit someone on the chin, they could go. But Malik Scott, in his only two losses, has been stopped and KO'd. Delonte Wilder KO'd him, and Derek Chisora TKO'd him. Derek Chisora is a good puncher, not a tremendous puncher. Delonte Wilder is a very hard puncher. So... Again, we're awaiting the start of Ortiz versus Scott, 12 rounds heavyweights. The winner of this fight will be propelled into more 
a chance for more major bouts. And as Ortiz sits back down on a chair and he seemingly is awaiting the um, order, I guess, or the notification to uh, start his ring entrance, but he sat back down. His corner people um, are also just waiting. Ortiz looks very calm, very relaxed. They've not shown Malik Scott's dressing room yet. I hope this fight starts fairly quickly. This is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching an Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. The live audio, my live audio call of Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott, 12 rounds heavyweights. Um, right now, they're in the Malik Scott dressing room as he's shadow boxing on his toes. He looks to be in excellent shape. He'll have to put forth his best effort as a professional uh, to outpoint and be victorious over Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz, a very big banger. Again, uh, probably the heavy favorite in this fight. Heavy favorite to knock out Malik Scott. I have Ortiz winning this fight via stoppage or knockout within five rounds. It could come sooner or it could come later. I would like to see a good fight. So if my pronoun Vacation is incorrect. That's fine with me. I love to call the fight, so hopefully it's a good fight. And again, both fighters are still in their dressing rooms as we await their entrance. There must be a fight going on still in the arena as we are in Malik Scott's dressing room right now, and he's just stretching a bit. He looks confident, looks to be in very good shape. Um, he does have a shirt on, but I mean, from what I see, he looks to be in good shape as he's pacing back and forth, awaiting this tremendous opportunity to get back into the heavyweight picture. What are your thoughts on the upcoming Ward Kovalev fight? Who do you guys like there? Jump in the chat. Share your opinions. If you're listening at a later date, leave a message. So they're just going over some uh, Malik Scott's statistics, or well, not statistics, but his last few fights. As I said, he has been stopped in two of his last six fights. He was KO'd by Delonte Wilder and TKO'd by Derek Chisora. So let's jump in the chat here. Evan Curry, well, would like people to subscribe for his channel. So there, Evan, I gave you a shout out. Hope all is well, Evan. Anyway, we are awaiting Malik Scott and Luis Ortiz. And that's become redundant. I wish this fight would start soon. So now they're showing highlights of Malik Scott versus Delante Wilder. And bam, the big right hand. And they're showing Scott down on the canvas, and he is not getting up, which we all knew. I think he's going to have tremendous trouble with Luis Ortiz. Uh, Luis Ortiz is a very hard puncher. Um, and I think he's going to have a lot of trouble. Evan Curry says, sound. You can't hear me, Evan? I'm pretty sure that it was a okay I'll be doing the audio call, Evan. There's no video. I provided links in the chat, as you can see above you, if you'd like to try to watch the fight. I also recommend downloading Mobdro. Hope all is well, Evan. Once again, we're back in Malik Scott's, excuse me, dressing room. He's pacing. Looking very, he's looking a little bit anxious. He wants to get going. His gloves are not even on yet. He's taped up though. He's stretching his legs, stretching his arms. So I was hoping that this fight would start fairly quickly, as this is the only fight HBO is showing. The main event of Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott, 12 rounds heavyweights. Once again, shout out to Phil the Issues Guy, Dirty Issues Gaming, Batman Boxing, Bayloric TV, Mosley Boxing, Johnny the Irish Wilding, Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint. All the links are provided below. Check those channel out. <clears throat> 
We are awaiting Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott. 12 rounds heavyweights. Back to the Ortiz dressing room as he's very calmly just sitting there, feet up, gloves are on, towel around his shoulders, waiting for the notification to enter the ring. HBO should do a better job of um, knowing when to put the fight on. I really don't think people want to sit here for 15, 20 minutes looking at both boxers in their dressing rooms. I'd rather they come on five minutes before they know um, that the fighters are going to enter the ring. It's, I don't know how much replays and highlights they can show. They've shown them all. Uh, obviously, there must be a fight finishing up in the ring, or these fighters would already be entering the ring. Al Red Sox fan, you're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. Hope everyone's doing well on this Saturday. Oh, great. More Luis Ortiz highlights. Awesome. Let's just get the fight going. So they're doing an interview with Ortiz now, and I have the sound way down. And uh, so I don't know what he's saying. But I would like to know your thoughts. Please share. What are your thoughts on this fight, Ortiz versus Malik Scott? And also, what are your thoughts on the upcoming Andre Ward and Kovalev fight? And what fights are you looking forward to in the near future besides Ward and Kovalev? So right now, HBO is doing a little promo, a little background on Luis Ortiz as we are waiting. Both fighters are still in their locker rooms. We're waiting for their uh, entrances into the arena here in Monte Carlo. And the 12 rounds, heavyweights. I like Luis Ortiz via stoppage or knockout within five rounds. I think he can walk down Scott. Scott might have moments, but... Um, I think Ortiz's power will eventually hit him. Scott will feel it, and Scott will go nighty night. I think Malik Scott has to fight the perfect fight. Have to has to box and counter almost like a Jimmy Young versus um, George Foreman, uh, and just not get hit. But Jimmy Young had a tremendous chin. Um, he could take a punch. In his prime, I don't think that Malik Scott has that same type of chin, chin, excuse me, but he could prove us all wrong. All right, so we are still awaiting the entrance of both fighters into the ring, the squared circle, the area of combat. It is now 417. And no fighter has left their dressing room. This broadcast by HBO started at 4 o'clock. Again, I don't know how they think that this is a service to the boxing fans by not having the fight ready as the broadcast comes on. I'd rather them come on, honestly. I'd rather them come on at 4.15, 4.30, or five minutes before the fight. Um, so we don't have to go through all this promo stuff right now. They're just talking about stuff we've just watched. So jump in the chat. Feel free to share your thoughts. It's Al Red Sox fan. You're watching on Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. Hope everyone's doing well out there on this Saturday. Late afternoon, early evening, late evening, wherever you are in the world. Jump in. Share your thoughts. What do you feel? Who do you have as the winner here? The hard-punching Luis Ortiz or the boxing Malik Scott. I like Ortiz within five rounds to TKO or knock out Malik Scott. This will be my live audio call, and in between rounds, I'll be jumping in the chat, sharing anyone's thoughts. So feel free to jump in. There is no video of the fight on this YouTube station. There are links provided in the chat or below. To tr if you want to try to watch, I recommend to download Mobdro. I provided a YouTube video to show you how to download Mobdro, which is a great app on one of your devices. If you go to the links, please be careful, as many links have malware. I don't recommend links, but people always ask for links, so I have provided links. 
We are now at 419, and no fighters have left their dressing room. This is what you call filler. And it would be much easier if someone would jump in the chat and talk to me. But that's okay. Once again, some shout-outs to Phil the Issues Guy. Dirty Issues Gaming, Batman Boxing, Bayloric TV, Mosley Boxing, Johnny the Irish Wildling, Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint. All the links are provided below. Check out their stations. They do some great work um, with boxing. Uh, would be Bayloric TV, Batman Boxing, and Mosley Boxing. Phil the Issues Guy does wonderful TV and movie reviews. Uh, Dirty Joe Locks and Taka are on Dirty Issues Gaming. They do some fun gaming, very relaxed atmosphere. They also do some wonderful little mini talk shows that are really amusing and fun. Johnny the Irish Wilding reviews movies and shows. And Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint, also reviews movies and shows. And I, myself, this is Al Red Sox Fan. You're watching on Al Red Sox Fan YouTube station. We are awaiting my live audio call of Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott. Once again, Ortiz is up in his dressing room hitting the pads uh, with one of his corner men. And he looks very loose, very relaxed. Once again, they're showing uh, Ortiz's recent ring record, which uh, recently he KO'd Tony Thompson. Which is very ironic because Malik Scott also his last fight was a win over Tony Thompson, except it was by unanimous decision. So hopefully, as Ortiz is back up, hitting the pads, that he's getting loose again, getting a sweat going, and uh, that the fight will be commencing soon. Hopefully, that both fighters will start their ring entrances. The fight is being fought in Monte Carlo in Europe, so. I believe maybe they'll it'll be an outdoor, a small outdoor arena. Possibly not. There's lots of casinos in Monte Carlo. Uh, extremely rich country, small country, extremely rich. And, oh, great, more. They're going to show some highlights of Malik Scott right now fighting Tony Thompson. They're showing his boxing, his countering ability. See, even in this fight here, they're just showing some clips here. And you can notice how Thompson was able to walk Malik Scott down to the ropes. And that will be his undoing. If Luis Ortiz walks Malik Scott down to the ropes and hits him with the same shots that Thompson hit him, the fight will be over and soon. So, And they're showing when Thompson dropped Malik Scott, though Malik Scott came back to win the unanimous decision. And the shorts that Tony Thompson wears are extremely long always. That's kind of funny. They look like, uh, what do the women call them? Um, chinos or capris? I really wish boxers would wear trunks just above their knees. They look, look more Spartan-like in my opinion. So now they're showing Luis Ortiz against Tony Thompson. And um, they're showing the kaboom and the knockout. Tony Thompson, good fighter, older fighter, has fought everybody, doesn't duck anyone. And there's that big right hand by Luis Ortiz on Tony Thompson, sending him down again. Caught him right to the side and back of the head. Again, these are highlights that they are showing as we await the main event of Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott. Neither fighter has left their dressing room. HBO's broadcast started at 4. It is now 4.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And no one has left the dressing room. I have said I would rather have HBO come on five minutes before the fight. So we can just watch the fight. And again, more total punches here. Uh, average punches per round versus Tony Thompson. Landed, uh, Ortiz landed 15, Scott 11. Thrown, Ortiz 42. Thrown, 33 for Scott. Percentage is about the same, 35 and 33. My God, do they have any more filler? Can we just get the two fighters in the ring so we can enjoy the fight? This is hilarious. They come on at 4 o'clock. It's 4.24. <laughs> Neither fighter has left their uh, dressing rooms. And again, I know HBO doesn't have control over that, but they should know better. They should come on about 
five, ten minutes before the fight because this is really, truly ridiculous. They came on at four o'clock, and they're basically killing a half hour of time. So this is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching an Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. At some point, the fighters will enter the arena, will enter the square for, uh, square ring, and uh, fisticuffs will take place uh, between Luis Ortiz and Malik Scott, and hopefully soon. So um, once again, shout out to Fill the Issues Guy, Dirty Issues Gaming, Batman Boxing, Baylora TV, Mosley Boxing, Johnny the Irish Wilding, Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint. All their links for their channels are provided below. Please check out their channels. They do wonderful uh, reviews for movies and shows. And, and also the ones who are associated with boxing, such as Big Lork TV and Batman Boxing and Mosley Boxing. Absolutely fabulous channels. Check them out if you're boxing fans. Check out uh, Fill the Issues Guy, Dirty Issues Gaming, Johnny the Irish Wilding, and Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint. If you enjoy movie reviews, TV reviews, video games, and things of that nature. They're just fun. They're fun people on YouTube. All right, so now we are again in Luis's Ortiz locker room, and they're putting the some uh, grease on his face, and there he's loose. He's ready to go. Look like he wants to get into that ring, leave the dressing room. Um, I just hopefully I hope this fight starts before seven o'clock. For God's sakes, how long it's taken them? Obviously, the fights have, in my opinion, without knowing, because this is the only fight that HBO is showing. Um, the, the other fights on the undercard must have ran late meaning went rounds so we are awaiting the entrance of lewis ortiz and malik scott 12 rounds heavyweights this is basically in my opinion a, a title eliminator i think ortiz is a heavy favorite i like ortiz to defeat malik scott within five rounds via tko or knockout if tony thompson could walk malik scott down towards the ropes and drop him i believe Luis Ortiz will very easily be able to walk Malik Scott down and nail him and end the fight. So share your thoughts in the chat. Jump in the chat. Feel free to bring your opinion on the Kovalev Ward fight also. Or what fights besides that one are you looking forward to? Coming up also, I know uh, Lucas Brown versus Shannon Briggs for one of the belts. I'm a big Lucas Brown fan. I enjoy his fights. They're fun and exciting. He might not be the most slick boxer, but he has tremendous heart, extremely tough, and a big punch. Neither fighter has left their locker room yet. I hope they leave soon. I hope we see a ring entrance very soon. As we await Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott, 12 rounds heavyweights. I'll be saying that in my sleep. They're just showing some upcoming fights here. Lomachenko versus Walters, Crawford versus Molina, Hopkins versus Smith Jr. Oh, Crawford should. Is that the Molina? I can't see which Molina it is, but if it's the, I think it's the. Oh, I think Crawford will easily beat Molina. Lomachenko Walters, very good fighter, Lomachenko, love him. And Bernard Hopkins is just a wonder of nature. He's 50 years old. He's in his 50s, and he's still fighting. He's tremendous. Hopefully he retires soon so uh, nothing bad happens to him. So they're showing HBO boxing highlights of upcoming fights. They're showing some Kovalev highlights here as he's whacking out people on the ropes so then they'll show some andre ward highlights as that fight's coming up i believe next week on hbo pay-per-view that should be a good one but we are awaiting the lewis ortiz malik scott 12 round heavyweights a title eliminator in my opinion i like lewis ortiz via knockout or stoppage within five rounds Hope everyone's doing well out there. This is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching an Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. We have been waiting a very long time for the fighters to actually leave their dressing rooms. My God, I hope they leave their dressing rooms soon. This broadcast by HBO came on at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is now 
4.30 Eastern Standard Time. I have been filling a half hour of me talking as now they're showing highlights and promoting Kovalev versus Ward. HBO should be ashamed of themselves for coming on at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and basically doing a half hour of fillers. The fight, neither fighter has left the dressing room yet. So this is extremely aggravating. They should not come on a half hour before with only one fight. There's only one fight on this show tonight, uh, this afternoon, or wherever you are. And just basically they're promoing stuff. This is ridiculous. I mean, how late how how late did those other fights go in Monaco? So right now they're just promoing uh, Kovalev versus Ward. You know, that's next week on HBO pay-per-view. Like the boxing world doesn't know that. But, you know, let's say feed some more of that crap to us. And again, I know they can't control what's going on in Monaco, but they should have had some inkling of when this fight between Ortiz and Scott was actually going to start. You know? It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. They basically come on at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and they've basically killed a half hour. I'd rather them come on at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, do about 5, 10 minutes of their backgrounds on both fighters promoting uh, the Kovalev and Ward fight. You can pretty much do that in 5 and 10 minutes. You don't need a half hour for that crap. And again, we're awaiting. They're showing the arena right now, and we're awaiting the entrance of both fighters. It looks like a pretty small arena. Uh, now, the tail of the tape, Ortiz is 37 years old. Malik Scott is 36 years old. Both fighters are 6'4". Arms length for Ortiz is 26 inches. Malik Scott is 28 inches. Ortiz weighed in at 239.5, and, and Malik Scott, wow, 246.5. So when he was in his dressing room, I thought he looked in good shape, but I did say he had a shirt on. So... 246. I mean, he's 6'4". He's a big man. So is Ortiz. But 246 and a half, if you're coming into box and, and and use your boxing ability and your movement, I think that's very heavy. Uh, that weight, to me, gives me the idea it's going to be a very short night from the league, Scott. Uh, again, my prediction is a Lewis Ortiz knockout or stoppage within five rounds. It could come even sooner. That's pretty heavy to, to, um, in the 240s from league, Scott. He has a slightly longer reach than Ortiz. And finally, finally the fighters are going to be making their way into the squared circle. And combat will commence shortly. Hopefully it will be an entertaining fight. And I will have an entertaining call for everyone who's listening uh, for as long as it lasts. So now we're going to have... Our first fighter leave the dressing room and enter the ring as we're in Europe. So there's lights flashing. They're going to come down a ramp. There's probably music on. I have the audio way down as you will be listening to my audio call. Uh, the first fighter out of their dressing room and on the ramp. is I believe that's Malik Scott. Yeah, that's Malik Scott. So he has a mask on. Eh, Halloween's over. So he's coming into the ring, and uh, he looks fearsome with that mask on. Is that Malik Scott? They have the Cuban flag behind him, but that does not look like Ortiz. Ortiz's trunks were white with red and blue trim. So this is Malik Scott, and they're walking him in with the Cuban flag. That's kind of funny. They got the wrong flag. And I just – I could be wrong. I want to see – I don't ever recall Luis Ortiz coming in with a mask on his face. So I think this is Malik Scott. I'm actually positive this is Malik Scott because Ortiz had white trunks with uh, blue and red striping. This is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. The live audio call and chat of Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott. 12 rounds heavyweight. Hope everyone's doing well out there on this Saturday. 
as Malik Scott is in the ring, and they walked him in with the Cuban flag and not the American flag. So that's kind of a faux pas, don't you think? It'd be kind of funny to see if they're going to get the flags right for Luis Ortiz, who is Cuban. And we await the entrance of Luis Ortiz to the ring. He's going to come in second. Um, as Malik Scott is in the ring, he looked ferocious with his mask on. Let's see how much that ferociousness will last uh, in this fight. It's one thing to look scary, I guess. And it's another thing to be scary. So here comes Luis Ortiz, a.k.a. King Kong. He is on the platform waiting to go down. And again, they got the flags wrong. This is hilarious. So they have the American flag with Luis Ortiz, and they have the Cuban flag with Malik Scott. So the people in Monaco cannot tell the difference between a Cuban flag and the flag of the United States of America. I find that highly amusing. Um, that's pretty funny to me. So Ortiz is right about to enter the ring, and he steps over the – so he's going to stay. He jumps over the top rope. He's entered the ring. He is wearing red, white, and blue. He has King Kong across his robe and a, a baseball cap on. It says, I believe that also says King Kong, which is his nickname for his devastating punching. And both fighters are in the ring, opposite corners, and we're just waiting for let's this, let's get ready for this fight to go, the instructions, and that's what we're waiting for right now. But the good news, at 4.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, both fighters are in the ring. Uh, Ortiz's hat says 305 on it, not King Kong. It says King Kong across his robe. So I don't think this fight's going to last long. I think the waiting for the fight's going to last longer than the fight. So we get our first look of Malik Scott with his robe off and in, in his boxing trunks. And let me just take a look here. He, you know what? At his 240 weight, he doesn't look bad. So he does look like he's in shape. And again, I'm not, he probably did come in shape. This is a huge fight for him. If he can upset Luis Ortiz, he once again becomes viable in the heavyweight division. Ortiz is a, takes his shirt off. They take his shirt off, and he looks the normal Luis Ortiz shape. He's uh, bulky, um, but he looks like he's in shape. He was very relaxed in his dressing room. He was becoming, to me, in his dressing room, getting a little pissed off as he kept, I think, you know, obviously both fighters want to get the fight started in. It's just really, I don't understand why it was so long to get them in the ring. So now they're introducing the referee who is Gene something. It sounds like a French name. and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. As we are very close for the beginning of festivities, a.k.a. some pugilistic combat here. In Monaco, 12 rounds of boxing, Luis Ortiz, Malik Scott, and thank God they're both in the ring. So they're going to be doing the introduction soon. Uh, both fighters are just in their corners right now uh, trying to stay loose. And uh, who do you like in this fight? I like Luis Ortiz within five rounds by stoppage or knockout. They're introducing Malik Scott right now. He looks in good shape. He looks in good shape. Once again, Malik Scott, 38 wins. Two losses, one draw, 13 KOs. His two losses have both been by uh, stoppage and knockout. So he has a suspect chin. Even in his last win over Tony Thompson, he was knocked down. And Luis Ortiz's record, once again, is 25 wins, no defeats, no draws, one no contest, 22 by KO. Luis Ortiz has an 81% knockout uh, percentage. And... Malik Scott has 13 knockouts in his 38 victories, which is a 32% knockout percentage. This is Al Red Sox fan, and you're watching on Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. This is my live audio call, and jump. I will be jumping in the chat if you'd like to share your thoughts in between rounds. So they're introducing Luis Ortiz, and this fight will finally get going about 4, my guess is 4.41 Eastern Standard Time. The broadcast came on. Oh, Ortiz looks a little pudgy, but he's never the most um, muscular guy. But he has tremendous punching power. He does look a little soft in the midsection. Hmm, interesting. 
Alrighty, so the introductions are over. We just need these two fighters to get to the center of the ring for the instructions from the referee. And we want to hear that first bell. Feel free to jump in the chat, share your thoughts, who you like in this fight. As both fighters are now getting the instructions from the referee, Scott bouncing up and down on his uh, toes. He has black trunks and they look is a black and pinkish kind of trunks. Uh, in my opinion, Scott's going to have to box the fight of his life to win this fight. Again, if Tony Thompson was able to walk him down and knock him out on the ropes, I think Luis Ortiz will do the same. And when he hits him, I don't think Tom, I don't think uh, Scott will be getting up. So here we go. We're getting ready for round one. This is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. 12 rounds heavyweights. And there's the bell. Both fighters move to the center of the ring. Uh, Scott is circling. And he's uh, hands held high. Ortiz is trying to walk him down. Scott is already on the ropes, and he gets off the ropes. He circles away. Neither fighter has thrown a punch. Scott again is on the ropes. Ortiz throws a flicking jab to the body but misses. Now he flicks a jab to the head and misses. Scott is on his bicycle early. He is moving, hands held high. Ortiz puts two jabs towards the face, but they don't land. Scott is moving back and forth, but is dangerously close to the ropes in the corner. And Ortiz has already almost walked him down to the corner. Now Ortiz says, come on, fight. He tells Scott as Scott continues to box and move. Uh, he's got it. I'd like to see Scott throw some jabs out there. I, I think he's already frustrated Ortiz, which is a good sign if you're Malik Scott. But he's got to throw some punches. Neither fighter has landed anything in this round, and there's two minutes to go here in round number one. Ortiz again says, come on and fight, and Scott just dances away. So Scott is frustrating him, which is not a good – oh, two jabs to the body by Ortiz. You know, soft jabs. One of them landed. As Scott is on his bicycle, circling, 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 and he, as he does it, he gets dangerously close to the ropes as Ortiz is able to walk him down. Ortiz is pawing with his jab. Scott is very dangerously close. And now the referee says, let's fight. The referee tells him, let's fight. Scott, again, is just hands held high, circling away on the ropes. Ortiz tries to throw a left hook, and he misses. He's just out of range of, that, of his punches, Ortiz. Ortiz throws a one-two to the body. The right hand did land grazingly to the midsection of uh, Malik Scott. Malik Scott's still moving, pawing with that jab. Now he ducks away and goes the other way. I tell you, his movement is very good. He's just got to throw a few punches in there. Oh, and there he goes. He threw a one-two, and he jumps into a clinch immediately. The right hand did land by Scott. This has been a very icky round. There's not a lot of action, but good movement by Malik Scott. As Ortiz pumps in three jabs, one might have grazed him. Malik Scott continues to move, but as he moves, he gets very dangerously close to those ropes. He's almost, and again, he's on the ropes now. Ortiz tries to lunge in with a left hook, and Malik Scott trips over his own feet but doesn't go down. No punch was landed. It was, he just stumbled over his own two feet. Uh, Malik Scott continues to stay outside. He is frustrating. Ortiz, Ortiz throws a one-two and I think that right hand landed, but they're calling it a slip. So, wow, I thought that right hand landed. So he's back up. The referee's uh, wiped off Malik Scott's gloves, and Ortiz lands a jab, and Malik Scott stumbles away. Uh, Ortiz lands a good right to the body. He's getting closer and closer to Malik Scott, and this could be the beginning of the end for Malik Scott as he's going to have to throw something. Malik Scott is on the ropes, and he just runs away from the ropes. And again, Ortiz says, come on and fight. So there's about 10 seconds left here in round one. Uh, this has been an Ortiz round. What little punches did land of any significance were, were from Ortiz. Ortiz has him on the ropes, throws some jabs, and there's the bell. Well, that was an Ortiz round. Ortiz actually looks very frustrated in his corner. So Malik Scott did do something good that he was able to frustrate Ortiz. He didn't win the round because he landed basically one okay right hand um, after a 1-2. Uh, but he was able to frustrate Ortiz tremendously in that round. On three occasions, Ortiz uh, was saying, come on, fight. Even the referee uh, told them, let's get, let's say this is boxing, not ballet. But I think Malik Scott has to box that way. I just think he's got to let his hands go now. He's moving quite well. He's already frustrated Ortiz with his movement. He has to throw some punches now. So I give round one to Ortiz. 
Uh, we're in the Scott corner now, and it looks like the corner is exhorting him to throw some punches. His movement was good. His movement caused a lot of frustration by Luis Ortiz. And here we go for round two again. Scott is on his bike. He's pawing out there with his jab, blocking Ortiz's jab as he comes dangerously close to ropes and comes off the ropes. So Scott is moving quite well so far early in this fight as Ortiz is trying to jab, but Scott just moves away. I'd like to see uh, or uh, Scott use his jab, or not even faint with the jab and come with the right hand. But he just continues to move away. A wild left hook blocked by Scott from Ortiz. As Ortiz gets him on the ropes, but Scott comes off the ropes, a one-two combination, but was blocked by um, Scott as he was moving away from the ropes. As again, Scott is circling, circling, circling. Ortiz is trying to walk him down, and he's not able to land. As Scott just stays out of range, but he's not throwing punches, Scott, and you can't win the fight. Ortiz throws a jab. Scott is dangerously close to the ropes again as as Scott kind of flicks a little jab back at Ortiz. Ortiz continues to stalk uh, Scott as as Scott just moves a uh, semi certain semicircle around him and then goes the other way now. As Ortiz tries to let his hands go, nothing really landed there. My God, Scott has to throw some. Or again, Ortiz is just boom, 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 trying to throw the jab out there. Nothing lands as Scott moves away, hands up high, and now they clinch, and the referee makes them break. One, two by Scott didn't land, but at least he threw it, and a countering, chopping right hand lands by Ortiz. And again, Scott moving away, but as he moves away, he gets dangerously close to those ropes. Ortiz jabs to the body as Scott just moves away from him. Scott throws a weird kind of left hand that misses. He goes to the ropes. He bounces away from the ropes, and Ortiz continues to try to walk him down. Scott Scott again to the ropes. Now he goes the other way. Now back again the other way. He flicks a little jab that hits Ortiz on the gloves. Again, back and forth. Scott makes Ortiz miss again. Ortiz seems to be frustrated. Ortiz trying to. Ortiz lands a right hand on the body as Scott moves away. Now Scott seems a, a little taunting of Ortiz. Uh, as Ortiz has him on the ropes and Scott just moves away. So he has been. Maybe he's not landing punches, but he is frustrating with movement. Scott throws a one-two that doesn't land. Ortiz tries to throw a one-two back that doesn't land as they, Ortiz continues to stock uh, Scott, who just moves in circles and goes back and forth, gets dangerously close to the ropes, and then gets off the ropes. Now he's on the ropes, and a right hand is thrown by Ortiz, but it's blocked by Scott, and he comes off the ropes, and now he moves to the other ring side on the ropes, and Scott flicks a little jab and moves away. A jab by Ortiz misses. So Ortiz seems very frustrated by this Scott movement. Scott on the ropes, but Ortiz is not able to trap him there. One, two, three, four punches thrown. A left hook at the end might have scored by Ortiz. A grazing left hook as, as Scott comes off the ropes. And again, back to the ropes. He's bouncing up and down. Movement good, but he's not throwing punches. He has to combine the movement with punches as he goes back and forth. And now he clinches with Ortiz as Ortiz closes the distance. And there's the bell. So. A frustrating round for Ortiz, but he won the round because he actually threw some punches and landed a couple. Um, Scott really didn't land anything, but his movement has been totally frustrating Luis Ortiz. This is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching on Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. This is two rounds have gone by in this Luis Ortiz, Malik Scott, 12 rounds heavyweight fight. I've given Luis Ortiz the first two rounds. Um, lots of movement by Malik Scott. He is frustrating Luis Ortiz, but he's not throwing punches. Ortiz has been trying to trap Malik Scott on the ropes and throw punches. I've given the first two rounds to Luis Ortiz, but he is very frustrated by the movement of Malik Scott. If I'm in Malik Scott's corner and I think they've been telling him, you've got to let your hands go. you got to let your hands go. At least throw one-twos or put the jab out there because his movement is really, really frustrating Luis Ortiz. Both fighters are off their stool, and we get ready for round three. And here's round three, center of the ring, and now the movement again by Malik Scott. As he circles one way, he continues to circle that way, and now he gets dangerously close to the ropes, or tees there. So right there, Scott tried to leap in with a right hand, and then he moved away. So at least he tried. Oh, now they're in a clinch. Scott ties him up on the inside and will not let go, and the referee orders the break, and then Ortiz throws a right hand off the break. So and it, it almost landed there. So again, Scott dangerously close to the ropes, left hook to the body, grazes Scott as he moves away, as he stumbles away. He was off balance. Again, uh, Ortiz, one, two, uh, jab, block to the head, or right to the body, landed a little bit. Uh, again, a lot of movement by Malik Scott, back and forth, but he's on the ropes. He's in the corner. 
Ortiz misses with a left hook, and Scott just moves away. Scott is, in my opinion, frustrating Ortiz with the movement. Scott, uh, Scott goes down. That was definitely a slip. Ortiz threw a big two-punch combination. Neither landed, and Scott stumbled once again over his own feet, which he's been doing quite a bit in these first three rounds. So Scott again circles away, circles away. Ortiz is stalking, stalking. He is the lion stalking the gazelle right now. Scott trapped on the ropes uh, in the corner. Ortiz just can't let his hands go. And they fall into a clinch, and Ortiz hits him behind the head. And the referee makes the break. So once again, Ortiz is stalking his prey, but the antelope that is Malik Scott is doing a good job of staying away from him. A 1-2, the second punch grazed Malik Scott to the body. A jab to the body by Ortiz. Malik Scott just moves away. He's got to let his hands go, though. Oh, good 1-2. Scott on the ropes. And uh, Ortiz follows up with that, but nothing landed on the follow-up punches. Or uh, Again, Scott is on the rope. Ortiz getting closer. Misses with a big overhand right, Luis Ortiz, and Scott just moves away. Imagine if he can counter him when he does that. Oh, Scott tried to leap in with a right hand, but it didn't land. Uh, Scott, again, moving away, just circling away, circling away. Left hook to the body. Ortiz lands on Scott as he moves away. Or Scott, again, on the ropes. Ortiz got to try to go to the body there, I think. He tried to, but Scott moves away. Scott moving away. Scott backing again to the ropes. Ortiz trying to let his hand. Oh, good little counter shot that stopped Ortiz for the moment. And Scott gets back on his bicycle and circles away. Now he moves to the opposite side of the ring to the ropes. Moves away as, Lord, as Ortiz misses a 1-2. Uh, Scott has his hands down. Scott lands a slapping left hook to the body. 19 seconds to go here in round three. Scott continues to move away. Ortiz tries to throw a left hook that, that caught most of uh, Scott's glove. Uh, one, two, Scott is on the ropes. One, two, three, nothing really landed there. So as, as Scott shakes his head again uh, at Ortiz, we're coming to the end of the round here. A body shot, and, that, and now Ortiz pushes Scott down. My God, he's been down the canvas three times without being knocked down. So the referee says, get up. So once again, Malik Scott, and there's the bell. Ah, that was a very sloppy-ish kind of round there. Let me jump in the chat real quick. Thad, Thad Boy 26 says, nice commentating. Thank you very much, Thad Boy. I hope you're doing well. It's been a, um, in my opinion, Thad Boy, Luis Ortiz has won all of these rounds. But um, Malik Scott's movement has frustrated him. He just has to somehow land some punches now. But uh, Malik Scott's playing a dangerous game of Russian roulette. Moving, he, gets, he goes to the ropes and... Uh, they're showing a replay here. And the right hand, okay, so the right hand, they're showing the replay. Those two right hands that I thought got caught in the glove, three right hands that I thought got caught in the glove actually did land. Uh, chopping right hands. So, but Malik Scott took them well. It was tough to see. Uh, I thought they caught mostly the gloves, but they, they actually went around the gloves and, and, and chopped him on the side of the head, three punches. So Ortiz is off his stool, getting ready for round four here as both fighters go to the center of the ring. As we're waiting for Malik Scott's cornerman to leave the ring. And here we go with round four. And again, Malik Scott is moving, but he's on the ropes. And he moves away from the ropes as Ortiz tried to uh, land some punches there but couldn't. So Malik Scott continues. One, two, missing badly. Ortiz spins around. He missed so badly. So see, the Malik Scott movement is frustrating Ortiz. He just has to incorporate some punches with that movement. I mean, Malik Scott, again, he's dangerously close to the ropes. And Ortiz tries to throw a combination, but Malik Scott blocks them. And uh, now they fall into a clinch, and Ortiz is trying to work that free hand. And now Malik Scott's down. He's saying he got punched in the back of the head. I mean, he really got pawed in the back of the head. I don't consider it. They're, are they calling it a knockdown? Uh, the referee is counting. And this fight is going to be – did he beat the count? He beat the count, I guess. That is the weirdest – What's going on? He's asking him to keep his head up. I think they counted that as a knockdown because he was counting. A chopping blow behind the head when they were in a clinch. Ortiz dropped him. So Ortiz is looking to finish him, and Malik Scott's trying to hold on for dear life. So Scott was hurt by a punch to the back or the top of the head when they were in the clinch. I didn't, it didn't look like much, but he went down. And he just barely got up. So now Ortiz is trying to follow up. With uh, Scott's on the rope, Scott throws a winging right hand. He misses. This should be the beginning of the end for Scott. He looks very awkward and just falling all over himself. And he goes down again. He wants out. He wants out of this fight. 
My God, he goes down with everything. So that was not a punch. And the referee's saying, do you want to fight? Do you want to fight? He's saying he got hit in the back of the head. He got, I mean, the, uh, come on, Malik. So Malik, again, is on the ropes. Ortiz is throwing his punches. and I mean, Ortiz is hitting, clubbing him on the back of the head. I'm not denying that, but throw some punches back. Uh, so he, oh, good combination there by Ortiz as he had Malik Scott trapped in the corner. He has Scott on the ropes. He tried to load up with a big right hand as he measured him with a jab, and the referee breaks him as he missed with that big right hand. 50 seconds to go here in round four as uh, Ortiz is measuring. Oh, he missed with an uppercut. Good counter shot by Malik Scott. He's got to do more of that. Malik Scott moving away as, as Ortiz is trying to measure. Another good counter right hand by Malik Scott as Ortiz is, tr again, trying to measure and land a big punch. I think he should try to go to the body. One, two misses as uh, Scott on the rope dips down. He dips down again as Ortiz missed with those, a body shot lands by Ortiz. Scott is moving, but he's very dangerous close to rope. Misses with a counter right hand. Ortiz paws out there with a jab. He's looking to land that big punch. One, two, one, two, both landed. The right hands landed, but they weren't heavy. Malik Scott smiles at him as he moves away. And now he's back into a corner, Malik Scott, as Ortiz is starting. One, two, pity padding, pity padding. Uh, Scott bobbing and weaving, dipping a little bit. He's, he's, he uh, misses both men, misses with wild right hands. As uh, Ortiz lets his hands go but misses. The, the little movement that Scott does just totally has Ortiz off his game plan. Scott tried to throw a haymaker right hand at the bell, but he misses. So I think there was a knockdown there in that round. It was a bizarre knockdown. I give that round to Ortiz. Uh, if there was a knockdown, that would be an extra point. I'm assuming it's a knockdown. They have the uh, – I have the audio down because I'm calling the fight. And the referee was counting. It was very awkward. A very awkward round. A very awkward round. I have Ortiz up for. Oh, let me jump to the chat real quick. I mean, for as awkward as this fight is, it's entertaining to me. I don't know why. This is usually not my type of fight to watch. It's very awkward. Let me jump to the chat. Um, Sad Boy says, Wilder fight has ruined Scott. Confidence in taking big, bigger man's punches. I agree. Good point, Sad, Sad Boy. Uh, Z Silver Wings. For Ortiz. Yes, I agree. So... Thank you for jumping in the chat. And this is Al Red Sox fan. Thanks to everyone who's joining us right now. Feel free to jump in the chat. I've given the first four rounds all to Luis Ortiz. Though Malik Scott did show some signs with some counter right hands, where he scored a couple of counter right hands. So it's round five, and my prediction was a stoppage or KO by five for Luis Ortiz. I have Ortiz up by four rounds. Okay, so not a lot of movement right now by Malik Scott. He's just on the ropes. He's a little side to side. Now, oh, wow, Malik Scott says, come on in. As he moves away, Ortiz loads up with a right and a left and misses with both. And now Scott mugs at him with his head. He mugs. He says, oh, he sticks his head out. So Scott's feeling it a little bit. He has some, oh, decent body shot. Scott again mugs. Oh, good right hand. That was a good right hand by Ortiz. And Scott is down. Those were good shots there. And, and, and I don't know if he's going to get up. He looks like he wants to get up. He's complaining the second – he kind of pawed behind his head again, saying the second punch was behind the head, but the first one wasn't. So, again, there's a knockdown. He's up, and we commence with the action again. And Scott throws a good one-two combination. Didn't really land, but he had some, he's had some oomph in those punches. Two minutes to go here in round five as Ortiz is looking again to stock and load. He's stocking the gazelle that Malik Scott is. And uh, Scott is against the ropes, and Ortiz is pawing with his punches. He throws a right hand. He misses. and. Scott's able to get away from the corner. Or, again, Ortiz is, is just frustrated. Oh, a good counter right by Malik Scott that grazed Ortiz. He should be throwing that counter right all night because he can come over that le uh, the left hand. One, two by Ortiz as Scott shakes. No, he shakes his head. No, he's on the ropes. That right hand did land by Ortiz, though. As again, Scott just stays on the ropes. I don't know if his legs are gone. Scott faints to the bottom. Oh, nice jab by Scott. See, he, he has ability here. Scott does have ability. But as, um, oh, another good counter right by Scott as Ortiz also lands a right. Scott is playing a dangerous game of Russian roulette. He stays on the ropes. Uh, and he shakes no as Ortiz lands a little right hand. Oh, he just, Ortiz just missed his chin with that right hand. Scott is not moving as much anymore. He's just walking away now. He's on the ropes, hands down. He flicks a jab. Uh, he's trying to, Ortiz comes in with a one-two and Ortiz is pawing with his jab. Good left hook to the body. Or Scott is on the ropes. He's trying to roll with the punches. Ortiz is trying to measure him with a pawing jab. and comes with a right hand that misses. Scott looks like he might be talking to a bit. Good little left hand by a uh, hook there by Scott. Now he digs a nice hook to the body. So And he's worn. 
But that's uh, Scott throws a looping right hand that misses. Scott does the most punches he's thrown all fight. Again, Scott throws a one-two. The second punch landed. Scott flicks him with a jab that landed. Again, not damaging punches, but at least Scott's showing some life. Though I think his legs are gone as he's not moving as much. He's trapped on the ropes again. Ortiz throws a one-two combination. Punches could have got through, but Scott had his gloves up high. Uh, again, Scott is on the ropes near a corner. Scott is mugging at Ortiz, trying to counter him. He throws a right hand that didn't really land. Uh, he dips. Ortiz is trying to... Oh, good counter shot right at the bell by Scott. Well... I still give that round, obviously, to uh, Luis Ortiz, but that's the most life that that uh, Malik Scott has shown. So let's look at the chat here. Um, a Yila Max is KO5 Ortiz. Well, the fifth round has come and gone. That was my prediction also. Sad boy, Victor Ortiz is the same No. Is the same. No confidence in taking hard punches. Oh yes, you're talking about. Uh, uh, are you talking about Malik Scott? Doesn't have confidence taking hard punches. They're just showing the replay. That was a good right hand that put him down, and the second punch was not behind his head. It was just a follow up that caught him on the side of the head. So, this is Al Red Sox fan, and you're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. Thank you very much for joining myself and everyone else. Jump in the chat. Jump in the chat. Share your thoughts. As we're coming up here on round six, I've given all five rounds to Luis Ortiz. As Scott tries to throw a counter right that misses, and again, he's dangerously close to the ropes. Very dangerously close to the ropes. As Luis Ortiz continues to stalk him and paw that jab out. He wants to land that big right hand. Again, Malik Scott is on the ropes. He's flicking out a couple of hard jabs there. He's trying to slap down Ortiz's jab. He dips away. He's showing a little more life in this round. Malik Scott is. Could he be gaining a little confidence here? He did some good things in the last round, even though he was knocked down. Uh, Luis Ortiz lands a little right, straight right to the body. Scott is on the ropes. Scott lands a clubbing right hand and comes off the ropes. But Scott is always very dangerously close to the ropes. He's on the ropes again, and Ortiz continues to paw with that jab, paw with that jab. As Scott tries to slap the jab away, Scott lands a, a little straight right to the body. He comes off the ropes. They're in the center of the ring right now as Ortiz continues to stalk his prey, continues to stalk him down as Scott once again is on the ropes. Oh, nice little uppercut there as Scott comes off the ropes. That was a sneaky little shot by Malik Scott. That was a nice shot there. Best shot of the fight. As Malik Scott continues to circle, his legs don't seem fully under him. Um, counter right by Malik Scott as Ortiz is letting his hands go at the same time. Uh, Malik Scott once again back to the ropes near the corner. Ortiz load, looking to load up. Scott kind of hits him with a flicking jab hook and pulls Ortiz's pants basic trunks basically down. That was kind of funny as he, Ortiz pulls his trunks back up. But I think the referee should pull him up a little higher. As again, Ortiz is stalking Malik Scott who goes back to his uh, second home, the ropes. Uh, Malik Scott, hands high, held high, not throwing anything. Ortiz throwing punches that aren't landing. Scott pawing his jab down. As Ortiz paws with his jab, Scott paws, whacks him down with his jab hand as he comes off the ropes and moves to the center of the ring. As Malik Scott flicks a jab that catches Ortiz back to the ropes. Both fighters throw uh, wild right hands that miss. Uh, and Ortiz kind of showboats a little bit, throws a one-two that doesn't land. Uh, Malik Scott moves a little bit. He, he, Malik Scott's using it. Oh, good one, too, by Ortiz. Scott is on the ropes, but he, he, I guess he was not as stunned as I thought as Ortiz did not jump on him. It's been a, a good, tough effort by Malik Scott. Another good right hand by Ortiz as Scott grabs the ropes and circles away. Again, he's moving right to the ropes again. Good left hook to the body by Malik Scott. Ortiz, oh, just missed with a countering right hand by Malik Scott. 15, 16 seconds to go here in round six. Ortiz throws a one-two that misses as Scott is on the ropes, tells him to come in. Oh, oh overhand right got through, grazed through. Ortiz land a couple of pity pat follow-up punches. Malik Scott's on the rope, mugging, mugging for the cameras now, ducks away, and he just walks away from the ropes. He looks tired, and there's the bell. That was an interesting action there. I, gi I give that round still to Luis Ortiz. Malik Scott's doing a little more each round, you know, but um, I still give that round to Ortiz. Let me jump in the chat real quick. Uh, Zach, how's it going, Al? It's going good, Zach. Long time no chat. Hope all is well. 
uh, Kill Greed. Ortiz easy Philly eats Philly fighters. Well, he's definitely eating that Philly cheesesteak in the ring. But Malik Scott is trying hard. Um, a lot of credit to him. Sad boy. By Jennings is smaller than Scott and seems to have done better than Scott has. Well, Scott's held up better than Jennings has, in my opinion. Uh, Silver Wings. Does Ortiz cut off the ring well? Yes and no. Uh, he walks him down. Well, it's pretty uh, Silver Wings. It's pretty easy right now for him because Malik Scott kind of just goes to the ropes. And I'm going to say no, he's not really cutting the ring off because Malik Scott's able to get away from the ropes when he wants. So he's able to walk him down, but he's not really... I mean, it is cutting off the ring. If you're able to walk someone down, it's cutting the ring off, but it's just not the way we're thinking of it. Again, Malik Scott just moving very slowly away, and now it goes to the ropes and just moves back and forth. Oh, good jab by Ortiz. Good jab by Ortiz. I've given all six rounds to Ortiz, and I believe he scored two knockdowns. There was one round. I think it was round three or four. I wasn't sure if it was a knockdown, but the referee was counting, so I have to assume it's a knockdown. It was, oh, good counter right hand by Malik Scott. And, and, and Ortiz stumbled away whether he's off balance. He wasn't hurt because he comes right back. And Scott is throwing some energy with those punches. A little open those punches now as they're in the center of the ring. That was a good shot there. And again, he tries to load up with the right hand. And there's some concern and frustration on, Ortiz, on Ortiz's face. Um, and Scott goes to the ropes. This has been a very tough, good effort. He's been down twice. Now, Ortiz throws some pity pat punches. All missed. And Ortiz, uh, Scott moves off the ropes. Ortiz is frustrated. Don't get me wrong. He is frustrated with this movement. And if, if Scott could put some punches together, he'd be even more frustrated. So Scott, again, just moving away. Ortiz is trying to hit him with a jab. He's just a little out of range right now. Jabbing to the body, Ortiz uh, misses, and Scott tries to come back with a left hook that misses. Scott is moving more, but just not fast. He is moving again to the ropes, but he flicks out a couple of jabs and moves away. Ortiz continues to stack. Uh, Scott is on the ropes again. Ortiz throws a one, two, three, and the chopping right hand landed. And Scott is taunting him now. Scott is feeling it. Hands down, another counter right hand, I believe, landed. Again, not they're not they're not hurting Ortiz, but I think that's scored. Scott is feeling it. He's just he goes. I mean, but it's dangerous. He goes to the ropes. He drops his hands. He's really frustrating Ortiz. Ortiz is way ahead in this fight. Scott wings a right hand off the ropes, but doesn't land. As Ortiz was able to get his glove up. Again, Scott on the ropes. He's, and Scott is using his jab hand to kind of knock down Ortiz's jab. And, and he's looking to counter with that right hand. As Ortiz throws a one-two, but Scott is on the ropes. And he dips away and, and, and dives away. And Scott lands a little jab to the body. Oh, another nice little one uh, combination, like an awkward combination by Scott. As Ortiz was punching at the same time. And, and Scott comes off the ropes only to go to the other side of the ring and go to the ropes. As Ortiz continues to paw with the jab, as Scott is on the ropes, and that shot was behind the head, but uh, Scott moves away. He took that punch much better. He was flopping all over the place in the early fight. Scott tries to come back with a counter right hand. That misses. Scott again is on the ropes. Different side of the ring, though, and uh, keeps his hands up. And Ortiz, one, two, three. Good shot there by Ortiz. I think that last hand was a really good shot as Scott is still on the ropes, but he just dips a little bit, dives a little bit, slides a little bit. Lands a counter right there. Not a lot on it, but it scored. A counter left lands uh, by Scott. And now he's just going in, but he's near the corner. He just goes side to side from each corner. Body shot lands by Scott. As And there's the bell. That was the best action round of the fight. And Ortiz goes back to his corner, and he shakes his head a little bit. He's very frustrated. I'm not saying he lost that round. He didn't. But Scott landed some decent punches there. Again, not heavy blows, but he landed. So he, he's frustrated, I think, Ortiz. And he's won every round. He's won every round, in my opinion. Let's jump in the chat real quick. Um, Andrew Lopez. Seven, I think. Mark Darby, who's up? Ortiz is up. I have him winning every round. Uh, seven rounds to none. Mark Darby, nice one. Uh, Andrew Lopez, couple of knockdowns already. Yes, yes. Mark Darby, who's been knocked down? Out. Knocked out. Did Murray win? I don't know. I don't know. I've only this was the only fight they showed. Silver Wings. Is Scott exposing Ortiz? It does look that movement gets him very frustrated. Great point, Silver Wings. Uh, I, 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 K. Murray won. Oh, thank you for that information. Um thank you very much. Okay, so we're we're here in round number eight. Round number eight, both fighters. Again, you uh, 
Malik Scott goes to his second home. He goes to the ropes, comes off the ropes, goes side to side, goes from one rope to the other. And uh, again, Ortiz is stalking him, trying to land big punches, but misses. Scott missed with a counter punch. Again, Malik Scott just moving away. And uh, Silver Wings, and a great point is Ortiz being exposed by this movement. It, to me, he gets he's very frustrated by it. Scott puts a little pecking jab out there. Ortiz is stalking, stalking. That jab had a little something on it by uh, Scott, but they didn't land. Scott moves away again. Ortiz is just looking to land big punches. He really hasn't worked the body too much. He did a little body work early in the fight. Scott's on the ropes, and he's just pawing with his jab to keep Ortiz off. Throws a weird right hand and comes off the ropes. Ortiz just, to me, looks befuddled. Again, he's winning every round, but he just doesn't look confident. Another weird jab lands by Scott as, as he's on the ropes. Ortiz throws a 3-4 a, a punch combination that doesn't really land. Scott stays on the ropes, dips away, keeps his hands held high, now moves the other side of the ring, and he's on the ropes there. As Ortiz is – I think Ortiz should just really land a – try to land some good body shots to bring Scott's guard down. And there, Ortiz worked the body with three punches, and he's worn for one low blow. But you know what? He let his hands go on the inside there. Those were some good body shots. Scott now moves back to the other side of the ring on the ropes, and they fall into a clinch. Uh, Ortiz is working the free hand. Scott works the free hand. Ortiz just shoves him off in aggravation. Uh, Scott circles away, slowly circling, not like Muhammad Ali in his prime, just slowly circling. A nice little counter shot caught on the gloves, though, but it was a good thought there. Another counter shot by Malik Scott. So he tried two counter shots that didn't land. Scott just one, two again doesn't land as he's circling away and he gets dangerously close to the ropes. He's on the ropes once again. A weird left hook doesn't land by Scott as he comes off the ropes. A jab grazes Scott as he moves away to the other side. Again, once again on the ropes. Scott on the ropes, and Ortiz digs a left hook to the body, and Scott shakes his head no. That Ortiz is working his free hand as they're in a clinch. Ortiz again goes to the body. Decent body shots. He's warned to keep the punches up. Scott flicks a little jab at him. Uh, he flicks another little jab at him. A wild right hand misses. Ortiz easily blocks it. As Ortiz continues to walk Scott down, but it's pretty easy as he just goes right to the ropes. Ortiz uh, jabs his way up, jabs again. Scott moves from one side of the ropes to the other side of the ropes. Now comes back towards the corner. Ortiz lands a good couple of good body shots trying to open up here, but the body shots landed. The other punches did it. Ortiz pulls down Scott's head. The referee's warning Ortiz don't pull down his head anymore. So again, Scott moves to the other side of the ring. Both fighters let their hands go. Nothing happens. Scott quickly gets off the ropes, and there's the bell. Another Ortiz round. He lands some good body punches there. I'm very impressed by Scott just by surviving this long, to be honest. I thought he'd be gone within five. He's shown a lot of determination. He's thrown some counter punches. I think he he's doing the best he can. I honestly do. He's, he's, he's shown a lot of heart, grit, and determination. He's been down twice. Ortiz seems frustrated. He's won all eight of these rounds, but he seems very frustrated. Let's jump in the chat really quick. Um, Elia Mack, oh, she said uh, Murray won. Thank you very much. Sad boy. Ortiz looking for KO could easily outpoint him. Oh, Ortiz is way up. Yeah. Uh, Aliyah K. Scott has gotten in the fight a bit. Yes, he has, in my opinion. Mark Darby, Ortiz wins on points, sounds like it's going. Yeah, I agree, Mark Darby. I just think he's very frustrated. He's very frustrated. Thank you once again for everyone joining the chat and watching. Al Red Sox fan, wait a second. Oh, he, okay. Scott was laid off his stool. I didn't know if they were stopping the fight, which would have been a disappointment. So round nine, Ortiz has won all eight rounds. Scott is actually fighting better than he is in the beginning as Scott uh, moves away from Ortiz once again. A little more movement, and Scott, again, he, he, he circles. He goes side to side, and he gets close to the ropes, and he's on the rope. Oh, this fight is over. Devastating left hook to the body. Oh, Scott trying to get up. He, oh, I give him a ton of credit. He got up. He got up. That was a devastating left hook to the body. Now the referee's asking if he's okay if he wants to continue. And uh, Ortiz is looking to finish him off here. He should go right back to the body. Uh, good one, two to the head. Uh, Scott has his hands held high. He's on the ropes. A left hook to the body didn't land with as much effectiveness by Ortiz. Again, Ortiz wings a left hook. Now he cuts the ring off, but uh, Scott moves away. Ortiz is trying to jab and load up with that right. Oh, another left hook to the body, but not as hard. Scott smiles at him as he's on the ropes. Oh, good. Ortiz winged a right hand, and Scott countered. Now Scott pushes Ortiz off the ropes. 
So, again, Scott goes right back to the ropes. Ortiz trying to get that magic with that left hook of the body again. He's trying to load up to the body. Scott's pity patting his jab and keeping Ortiz off balance as Ortiz really wanted to load up with that left hook of the body. And he misses as Ortiz misses with a wide left hook, and Scott tried to counter him, but he missed. Now they move off the ropes, and they're away from the ropes, but Scott getting dangerously close on the other side of the ring of the ropes. He's on the ropes again. Ortiz throws a left hook to the head. Scott moves away. Oh, good body shot. Straight right hand to the body. Oh, good right hand as Scott is posing and mugging on the ropes, taunting Ortiz. An uppercut doesn't get through. Again, Scott taunts Ortiz as he comes away from the ropes. Now he goes back and forth. He's taunting Ortiz at the moment. Ortiz misses with a left hook. Scott pushes him away. Scott's shown a lot of balls, in my opinion. He's been down three times in that fight, and I think that body shot was really good. Oh, good counter shot by Scott as he walks away. Ortiz shows a little frustration, but he's determined as he continues to walk down. Scott's on the ropes, misses with his countering shots. Ortiz is trying to get in range, pawing with that jab. He lands a good hard jab, another decent left hand. He's warned about – there's a warning to Ortiz. I'm not quite sure it was. And Scott's on the ropes on the other side of the ring now as Ortiz is trying to measure him. Again, he's, as Ortiz kind of flicks his gloves down, you know. Try to stay loose. Both fighters throw a combination there. Ortiz continues to flick that jab as Scott moves to the ropes again. As Ortiz trying, he, Ortiz threw four punches. Nothing really landed. As Scott's on the ropes, I think Ortiz should just really try to nail him in the body again. So, which he did try earlier. Oh, he missed with that. He missed with that sweeping left hook, uh, right hook. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a right hook. He might have dropped him with the body shot. It was a right hook too. Now that I'm thinking about it. So a jab there, and Malik Scott. Moves away. And he, oh, he sticks his, he kind of, he sticks his, I can't know if he's sticking his tongue out. And there's the bell, or his chin out. He's sticking his chin out. I'm sorry. He's sticking his chin out. There's the bell. Another big round for Ortiz, but he's frustrated. You can see it when he sits down on his stool. He's frustrated. He's won every round. He's scored three knockdowns. We're coming up on round 10. They're trying to encourage Malik Scott in his corner. Malik Scott's done some good things with movement and some counter rights. Let's jump to the chat real quick. Um. Sad boy. Scott's last chance at big heavyweight fight. Yes, I agree. Um, Kildreed. Scott is hanging on. He's hanging on, Kildreed. He's fighting a tough fight. Andrew Lopez. Ortiz was supposed to destroy Scott. Bad matchup. Or are we discovering Ortiz has been heavily hyped? Good points. We will talk a little later about that. Keep that thought because I've been thinking the same thing, and I believe it was Aaliyah, K, Aaliyah Mack might have said the same thing also, or Wings. Um, Kildreed. Bang! Mark Darby, go on, Scott. Okay, here we go to round 10. For a lopsided fight, to me, it's been sort of entertaining. Scott's shown a lot of determination. Round 10, and Scott's on his horse again. He's on his bicycle, moving, circling. Uh, the movement has frustrated Ortiz, in my opinion. If you're not able to watch the fight as I'm calling it, check it out. I'm sure someone will post it later, and you can either come back, agree, or disagree in the comments. Uh, I think this ring movement by Scott has frustrated him. So, Scott, what's been going on right now in these 30 seconds? Scott's just moving away, and Ortiz is stalking. Scott is on the ropes, and he dips away to the other side. And and, and he throws an awkward one-two that doesn't land. This little this movement by Scott has frustrated Ortiz, and he's scored three knockdowns. Ortiz, a wild right hand, hits Scott in the back, lower back. That was kind of strange. So, again, back and forth. Malik Scott is going, oh, nice left hook to the body. Not tremendous power, but nice left hook by Ortiz. Again, Scott goes to the ropes as Ortiz is trying to find his range. Trying to find his range. Again, Ortiz pawing with his jab. And Scott's using his jab hand to try to knock it down. Or Scott is on the ropes, and he's just dipping and diving, dipping and diving. So... Malik Scott's in the corner now, trying to land punches Ortiz as he pulls Scott's head down, and he's warned again. So Malik Scott continues to move. His little movement has really frustrated Ortiz here as he goes back to the ropes once again. Ortiz is trying to land the jab, trying to find the range for his bigger punches. He just has not been able to do that in this round. He did land an okay left hook. As he tries to load up right there again with a right hand, and Scott just moves away from it. So Scott was dangerously close to the ropes, and, and, and Ortiz tried to load up. There's a minute. Oh, that one got through. 
That one got through, and Scott shakes his head. I A uh, good shot to the head and then a good body shot by Ortiz, and Scott just says, no, no, no. 50 seconds to go here in round 10, and Malik, oh, another good shot, and uh, Malik, uh, Malik Scott counters with a decent shot. Malik Scott has been holding up pretty well with those. Those are some decent head shots there, and he took them quite well. One, two by Malik Scott off the ropes, but don't land. Another counter right doesn't land, and Scott goes away from the ropes and is circling, and he's going to the other ropes. One, two by Scott again. Oh, big uppercut missed by Ortiz. He left himself wide open there, but Scott was not able to counter. Ortiz pumps a couple of jabs into Scott's face. Scott on the ropes. Ortiz digs to the body, and there is – no, I'm sorry. The referee is warning him to keep the punches up. I didn't think that blow was low. I thought it was a good blow. Ten seconds to go here in round ten. As uh, Scott goes to the ropes, gets off the ropes, shakes his head. Ortiz is stalking, looking to load up again. Uh, Scott throws a weird left hook, and there's the bell. Um, another, or I have Ortiz winning every round, every round. He is very frustrated, in my opinion, by the movement of Malik Scott. He landed some good punches, but he, he looks frustrated to me, I think. So let's jump in the chat real quick. Kevin Johnson, what I've heard, it's been a boring fight so far. Well, it's been one-sided. Victor says, I think Wilder beats Ortiz. It's an interesting fight. I, I think Wilder would have the advantage there. Mark Darby, roll on the 10th December when it's Joshua time. That won't be boring. He will KO his victim. He be, he should KO the, the fighter he's fighting, Anthony Joshua. Kevin Johnson, I think Wilder's the best. Um, Wilder beats AJ, in my opinion. So we're getting here to round 11. I'm going to jump back in the chat. Thank you for everyone who's joining us here. Jump in the chat. Feel free to share your thoughts. Al Red Sox fan, you're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. Round 11 as a uh, same of the more, more of the same, however you want to say it. Scott goes to the ropes. He moves away from the ropes. Ortiz stocks and tries to hit him. Oh, countering shot by there, Malik Scott there. Not a bad shot. So Ortiz, again, is it seems for another two Three countering shots there by Malik Scott. None of them landed as Ortiz is trying to get in range to let his hands go. As the, this movement that Scott has provided in this fight has really frustrated. As he's on the ropes and he spins away from the ropes. So Malik Scott's movement, in my opinion, has very much frustrated Luis Ortiz. Oh, a weird feint and two weird missed punches by Malik Scott. That was extremely awkward. So... But it, it, those feints actually put Ortiz out of position. He should have let his hands go, Scott, but he didn't. So, again, Scott is dangerously close to the ropes in the corner as Luis Ortiz is pawing with his pawing, trying to load up. He throws some type of punches. They go into a clinch. They come out of the clinch. So, once again, Malik Scott, Malik Scott goes to the ropes. A, a wild right, right hand misses by Malik Scott as Luis Ortiz continues to stalk, continues to stalk his prey, but has not been able to land the finishing blows. Ortiz has him on the ropes, throws a three-punch combination. Two of those punches landed, and Malik Scott just shakes his head no. Malik Scott lands a nice jab there as he goes side to side on the ropes, comes off the ropes, lands a grazing right hand. He's off the ropes. He's circling as, again, Ortiz is trying to walk down Malik Scott, but not cutting the ring off. This movement this ring movement has totally frustrated Luis Ortiz in my opinion who has won every round Scott is on the ropes comes off the ropes again before Ortiz could let his hands go all righty so Malik Scott is continually moving again slight movement but he goes to the ropes and now Ortiz tries to land a sweeping hook, uh, uppercut hook that misses Scott comes off the ropes goes to the center of the ring Malik Scott continues to to just frustrate him with the movement Ortiz tries to go to the body there. It was partially blocked. 38 seconds to go here in round 11. Again, pawing with the jab is Ortiz. As Scott, again, dangerously close to the ropes. He's looking to land a counter right, possibly, Scott. But he doesn't throw anything as Ortiz. There's a counter right, but it misses by Scott. Again, the feint just puts Ortiz out of position. He seems like he's a little off. He's not in a rhythm. He's, he's not in a rhythm at all in this round, Scott. Oh, pretty good body shot there by Ortiz. It was a sweeping body shot. Ortiz lands a jab. Nine seconds to go here in round 11. Another jab landed by Ortiz as Scott 
Plays that another jab landed by Ortiz. The Russian roulette back and forth from the ropes. A body shot that was slightly low, and there's the bell. I have given Ortiz every one of these 11 rounds, but he he has been, in my opinion, very frustrated by the movement. The movement. He's very frustrated by it. That being said, he's won every round. So let's jump to the chat real quick as we're coming up in the final round, round number 12. Um, Z Silver Wings, anyone showing signs of fatigue? Not really. Uh, signs of fr frustration by Ortiz. Um, Kill Greed. Rivas versus Mansoor, good fight. Aya Mac. Are you going to commentate on AJ's fight? I, if I'm around, I will. I'm going to try to. I hope everyone's enjoying this. Are you enjoying this? Uh, Mr. Dammy, Ortiz is good, but no chance against AJ. Ortiz is old. Okay, so we're coming up on round 12 here. We're coming up on round 12 as my cell phone continually goes off. I forgot to shut it off, so I apologize for the ringing. Here we go, round 12 as the fighters touch gloves. Once again, we have, we have, uh, excuse me, Malik Scott just moving, circling away, trying to put the jabs out there. They fall, oh, and there's an awkward wrestling move by Ortiz, and Scott goes down. He flops down like a, he just flopped down there. He's up. And one-two combination from Leek Scott. He's on the ropes. Ortiz tries to let his hands go. He slides off the ropes back towards the center of the ring briefly as Scott just goes to the other side of the ring and goes to the ropes. He's dipping and diving. He's trying to survive this round. You know what? I hope he does. He's, he's tried hard. He just – I thought he'd be out by five as Ortiz is trying to let his hands go as he has Scott on the ropes. Now they fall into a clinch and they're broke. The referee breaks them. and. Scott, once again, goes to the other side of the ring and goes to the ropes. Now slides away from it. A minute 46 to go here in round 12. As, again, the flicking jabs. Ortiz can't land anything while Scott is on the ropes. Scott flicks out a jab. Ortiz lands a body shot. Ortiz tries to land a looping hook. Scott just continues to walk away from him. One, two, missed by Ortiz. As Scott is on the ropes. Now he's saying, come on in. Come on in, Ortiz, he's saying. Uh, right hand, left hand, all blocked as a little counter shot. Scott lands a little counter shot, comes off the rope. He's in the center of the ring. He's now again backs towards the other ropes as he normally does. Rinse and repeat. Ortiz has got him pinned on the ropes, letting his hands go, but not really landing anything. Ortiz seems very frustrated. A nice little jab there, another little pecking jab by Scott. Hands down, now hands up. Ortiz trying to work the body. Scott lands a counter right there. Nice counter right there. 55 seconds to go here in round 12. Oh, I, that was a good shot. I, I think that caught Malik Scott, but he absorbed it well. He's on the ropes, 45 seconds. He moves off the ropes as he uh, taunts Ortiz again as he sticks his chin out. They're in the center of the ring briefly. Now Scott's on the other side of the ring on the ropes. Left hook mixes by Ortiz. Scott moves to the other side of the ring on the ropes. 30 seconds to go here in round 12, and Malik Scott looks like he's going to survive this 12 rounds. A good jab by Ortiz. But no follow-up punches were landed as Scott moves away, but then moves the ropes, throws a one-two that is missed, blocked. They're in a clinch. 12 seconds to go here in round 12. They pull his head down. The referee is saying, keep your head up to Malik Scott. Four seconds to go. Scott moves back to the ropes, his summer home. Ortiz lands some chopping punches to the head and body. The bell should be sounding soon as they're clinching. And there, wow, this is the longest four seconds I've ever heard. No, and there's the bell. Wow, that was a long four seconds. Let's just do four seconds. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that was a long four seconds. <laughs> anyway, I have Ortiz in a total whitewash winning all 12 rounds, but Malik Scott did frustrate him. Uh, Malik Scott survived three knockdowns and totally frustrated Ortiz with his movements. So I am going to be right back as I have to take this phone call. Stay there. I shall be back.
Alrighty, I apologize for that. It's Al Red Sox fan. I'm back in the chat. Sometimes real life comes into play. And real life just came into play. Anyhow, hope everyone... Can everyone still hear, hear me? Is this still going? Anyhow, hopefully it is. Let me jump in the chat. <laughs> you know, sometimes real life stinks. But anyhow... So, all righty, let me get back in the groove here. Let's jump in the chat. So, Luis Ortiz won a 12-round decision, would be my guess, as I had to take a phone call. There is no way he lost that fight. Yeah. Thank you, fat boy. Thank you. Uh, I hope he did win, right? <laughs> anyway, again, I'm sorry about that, but uh, real life came into play there. So, anyway, so I know I keep saying that. Um, so, let's jump in the chat here. Thank you very much for everyone who's joined us uh, in this 12-round victory for Luis Ortiz. In my opinion, he was very frustrated by Malik Scott's movement. So, right now, we're not, we know what happened. It was a whitewash for Luis Ortiz. What are your thoughts on that? There's some really good points in the chat about what has he been exposed. To me... He might have. Been, he was exposed in this fight. That movement totally frustrated him. He dropped Malik Scott three times during the fight and was not able to finish him off. Let me just say thank you to everyone who stayed in the chat when I had to take a, a phone call. Again, real life comes into play with these things. So I appreciate everyone who stayed in. And that's going to be some dead air, huh? So if you did like this and you like to talk boxing, Please hit the like button. Please hit the share with your friends. And if you want, subscribe. Most of all, please return back um, for the next one, as I love talking boxing and chatting boxing. I'm a big boxing fan, and I enjoy doing this. So we're going to go in the chat for just a bit here. And this is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. I appreciate everyone who has joined us. If you just jumped in, we're still talking boxing. All boxing subjects are on. So jump in. I'm going to be jumping in the chat. We have just seen Luis Ortiz win a 12-round, in my opinion, unanimous decision. Malik Scott was dropped three times, but Malik Scott's, uh, quick summary, Malik Scott's movement totally frustrated Ortiz. And there are some really good points in the chat. Wings said, has Ortiz been exposed? Thad Boy also, has he been exposed? Mark Darby, has he been exposed? So these were all, I mean, again, really good thought process there. So let's just jump in the chat. And Andrew Lopez says, I put my money on Parker hands down after this performance by Ortiz. Really? Okay. But do you think Parker, now, do you think Parker, who, Parker's from New Zealand, is that correct? I believe he's the New Zealand heavyweight. Do you think Parker would be there? more for Ortiz to hit. So, um, Thad Boy, surprised he survived. Not sure if confidence Ortiz couldn't finish due to frustration. I think he did gain confidence because he was he was mocking Ortiz, <clears throat> taunting, sticking his chin out, doing, you know, the, the, the I'll stick my chin out, you can't knock me out kind of thing. He was taunting him. Uh, but there was frustration also. Very good points, Thad Boy. Uh, Andre Lopez, yeah, so much for the KO artist motto. Motto, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, this was the fight that would have um, really, you know, I, I again, Malik Scott's been stopped and knocked out. Derek Chisor is not a big puncher. I don't know what you guys think about Derek Chisor. I'm not a big Derek Chisor fan. Um, I don't think he lets his hands go. I think his fights are boring. It's a lot of clinching and stuff. This was a one sided fight, okay? It was 12 rounds, or T's won all 12 rounds, but it was it was entertaining to me, just because I was in shock that Malik Scott lasted that long and he fought hard. His movement totally, I I almost enjoyed watching how frustrated Ortiz was getting. So, um, Mark Darby, can you say stay awake, Stacy May? Thanks, I just did. Uh, Asian guy. Joshua would have looked just as bad if he had fought Scott. In fact, that counter would have probably dropped him. It's all to do with styles, people. You are correct. Um, there, Scott did land a couple of decent counter rights. 
A sad boy. Not exposed, but a hole in his game. That's slightly being exposed, but I understand what you're saying. It's not uh, it, the movement. He'll have to work on that. Um, Asian guy. Ortiz would easily KO AJ and Parker, but Wilder would be difficult to call as he actually has shown a back foot game by all of Not against opponent with world class foot speed. I think Wilder's good. I think he's awkward. I think he keeps his hands down and he can't be countered. Uh, he can't get hit with a right hand, but I understand what you're saying. Kevin Johnson, yeah. I'd probably say Parker, too, but Parker needs a big fight before Ortiz, I think. Or could the Ortiz fight be Parker's big fight? Mark Darby, nice one. Asian guy, Parker has a good chin, but he can't fight on his back foot. Mark Darby, you you doing the Conor McGregor fight later on? I don't know much about UFC. I like Con Conor McGregor, and I, I wish him good luck. He's entertaining. I watch the replays. Um, I couldn't call a UFC fight if someone paid me. I don't know about the, the wrestling tactics. Uh, who do you like in that fight? Give us your opinion on the McGregor fight. Thad Boy, 26. He's a heavyweight version of Rigado. Parker is a heavyweight version of Rigado. Is that what you're saying, Fat Boy? Or did I miss something in the chat? Once again, this is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. Thank you very much for everyone who has joined in. Watch the fight recap. Uh, Lewis Ortiz won 12 round unanimous decision. He dropped Malik Scott. He dropped Malik Scott three times. And we're in the chat with some really great boxing fans. Um, Mark Darby, want Conor McGregor to get to get spanked? All right. So you're not a Conor McGregor fan. Again. I don't know much about UFC, but feel free to share your thoughts and educate me. Fat boy, Ortiz. Okay, you're saying Ortiz is like Rigado. Okay. He was, again, Ortiz to me was very frustrated by the movement that Malik Scott shown in, in, in the movement. Fat boy, 26. Cuban boxing. Yeah, it was. The other thing that Malik Scott did that I think really was another factor in frustrating uh, Luis Ortiz was when Ortiz was just pawing his jab, uh, Malik Scott would just slap his jab down with his jab hand. So, Kevin Johnson, were all the knockdowns legit? Yes. The first one, because the, the first one I'd have to see a replay on, but because Malik Scott didn't argue and the referee counted, I would say yes. And the other ones were definitely legit. The body shot knockdown was the best in my opinion. In my opinion. So, once again, this is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. I appreciate everyone who has been with us through this 12 rounds of my live audio call in the chat. Jump in. Share your thoughts on boxing. Um, what do you think of the Ward Kovala fight coming up? I'm going to be on here for another 10 minutes probably. And then, once again, real life has to come into play, unfortunately. So, who do you guys like in the Ward Kovalev fight, and what fights are you looking forward to uh, see that are going to be coming up? Also, um, Mark Darby's a UFC fan, and he'd like to see Conor McGregor get spanked. So, share your thoughts in the chat on that. I'm not big on the UFC; I don't know too much about it. I know a few fighters. I enjoy it now and then. Uh, Kevin Johnson, we're all. Oh, sorry, we already answered that. Uh, Kevin Johnson says Ward by points. So I kind of I'm, I agree with you if it's the ward from if we get the ward from the Super Six tournament from the Super Middleweight tournament if we get ward that's just slightly better than his tune-up fights then I think Kovalev has a really good shot. It's just the tune-up fights never I know I know they're tune-up fights, but I don't know. It's just I I. I was hoping to see a little progression. I mean, he won his tune-up fights, obviously. That's why the fight's taking place. I just thought there'd be a little little improvement. So, But that's coming up next week. And I will most likely be having that fight live audio and possibly a special treat. Fat Boy 26. Wilder's still learning on the job. Defense questionable, but his power, athleticism, makes up for everything. He does have power and he does have athleticism. And I, that is a very good breakdown, Fat Boy 26. 
of Wilder. You hit that out of the ballpark if I may use a baseball reference. Because that's those are my exact thoughts. He's awkward at times because, like you said, he's learning on the job. He has good power. He has a lot of athleticism. Um... But he can be hit, and he backs – sometimes he backs straight up with his chin held high. So once again, this is this is Al Red Sox fan. You're watching an Al Red Sox fan YouTube station. We have just finished the live audio and chat of my live audio call of Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott. Luis Ortiz won a 12-round unanimous decision. He dropped Malik Scott three times. Um, we're just staying in the chat for a little bit, discussing some boxing. Uh, if you like – this show, please feel free to hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Would love to see everyone come back for my next show, which most likely will be the Kovalev fight. I'm planning to do a show there. Probably the whole fight card, but I'm not sure yet. Um, anyhow, also a few shout-outs to some friends of my station. Phil the Issues Guy, Dirty uh, Dirty Issues Gaming with Dirty Joe Locks and Taka, Batman Boxing, Baylor TV, Mosley Boxing, John the Irish Wildling, Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint. All lovely people, wonderful people who are, have YouTube stations. I recommend check them out. Uh, the boxing ones are Batman Boxing, Baylor TV Boxing, and Mosley Boxing. All great channels. The TV shows and review shows and video game shows are Fill the Issues Guy, Dirty Issues Gaming, Johnny the Irish Wildling and Broken Black Man 94, a.k.a. David the Saint. All the links are provided below. Check them out. You know, a lot of nice people on YouTube, and they're some of the best. On that note, everyone, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate everyone who stayed through my uh, phone call that I had to take because real life came into precedent. Couldn't help but do it. Um, add comments below and um, regarding who you think is going to win the Ward Kovalev fight. And if you'd like to see more of these shows, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Please share. But most of all, come back. I enjoy when I get to chat with some great boxing fans. Um, just some shout-outs to people who are in the chat. We had Kevin Johnson. We had Mark Darby. We had Fadboy26. We had Wings. Uh, Asian guy. Let's see who else. I'm gonna go. I'm scrolling back up. I know I'm gonna make Andrew Lopez and Kilgreed, Mr. Dammy, Christian, Victor, Aaron. Sorry, I can't pronounce. So we had a lot of wonderful people in the chat today thank you very much um let me get back to the bottom and get some closing thoughts here from people in the chat room and anyone i missed and anyone who watched thank you very much once again all right let's go asian guy his ass he's talking about wilder here and he i believe he's responding to sad boy 26 asian guy says his athleticism and power all contribute contribute to his defense he's not the best technical fighter out there in fact he's very sloppy i agree with that asian guy but he has shown enough to enough of a back foot game where it is possible asian guy does seem to like that back foot game he likes um you're able to you know fight and back up a bit and uh asian guy for him to ko so you think if wildler fought ortiz he would ko him and the last comment goes to Fad Boy 26. Ward, best boxer. He's been number two all the while. Mayweather was active. But he's clearly the best and will beat Kovalev the same way he beat Frosh. Fad uh, Boy 26, if he is the Ward from the Super Six tournament, I agree. So, up. Oh, and a, let's go with one last one from Asian Guy. Ward. Back in the Super 6, I would say yes, but he's an unknown quantity. And when you have the power of Kovalev, I would favor Kov in the fight. Great points back and forth. Wonderful job by Sad Boy 26 and Asian Guy. I want you guys to come back once again. I want you guys to definitely be back. Wonderful comments by you two and by everyone else. But that was a great back and forth. 
those are my exact opinions on that fight. Great job. Great job to everyone in the chat for sharing their comments. Once again, this is Al Red Sox fan saying thank you very much. Shout out to everyone who jumped in the chat room and everyone who watched Luis Ortiz versus Malik Scott, my live audio call and fan reaction in the chat room. Uh, quick summary as we go out. Luis Ortiz won a 12-round unanimous decision over Malik Scott. He dropped Scott three times during the fight, but Scott totally frustrated Luis Ortiz with his movement. Um, Lu uh, Scott played a lot of Russian roulette going to the ropes, but there was never a bullet in the chamber, and Luis Ortiz was never able to stop him. And on that note, I'm going to say, everyone, have a great day, great night, great morning, much health and happiness. This is Al Red Sox Fan signing off. And you're watching Al Red Sox Fan YouTube station. If you liked the show, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Please share, but come back. So, once again, thank you very much to everyone. Health and happiness, and God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.